All right, today's video is going to be the books that I would like to get to for the fall season, which also technically means the books that I would like to read before the end of the year, because fall season for me starts in September and it ends like December 21st. So basically, these are all the books that I want to try and get to before the year is done. And before we begin, as usual, I'm going to read out of my encyclopedia of spirits. Okay, here we go. Ready? Let me hold my little sticky tab. Um, last time I think I did back, so let's do... Oh, oh, all right. No, no, no. Right here. What's here? Nope, that's too far forward. That's like the explanation of the book. Let's see. All right, we have Ayatar. Ayatar is most frequently described as a malevolent disease spirit living in the forest of Estonia and Finland on the tundra. Proximity is sufficient to cause illness. No direct contact is necessary. She is an ancient pheno ugric spirit banished by Christianity. Hence, she lingers in desolate areas where people are unlikely to bother her. Transmission of disease is her way of saying keep away, similar to a skunk's emissions. Ayatar is sometimes called the devil in the forest or the devil's mother. Post-Christianity, Uko, the old man, leader of the Finnish pagan pantheon, was identified with the devil. Yeah, was identified with the devil. His name sometimes used as a synonym, as a synonym, as a synonym, as a synonym. <laughs> As a synonym, synonym for Satan. God, I gotta stop. It is possible that Itar is his mother. Among the symbols and sacred animals is a snake. Itar may appear as a dragon, as a snake, or as a woman sucking, suckling snakes. Okay, that's awkward. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so I have quite a few books for the fall or end of the year. So I'm trying to like get to my thriller horror books a little bit more because honestly they've been piling up and I've been ignoring them and I'm just gonna list them off and we'll just we'll just go with that. So the first one that I would like to get to at some point is Small Favors. I kept hearing really good things about this one. I've heard, you know, it's a horror but it's also young adult so it's not like I guess that awful but I've also heard that it is quite surprisingly awful. Um, right on the back here it just says Enter not the forest deep, beyond the bells the dark friends keep. Oh, the f dark fiends keep. So as usual, I don't like reading the whole thing, so we'll just read the first paragraph. It says, Ellery Downing is waiting for something to happen. Life in isolated Amity Falls, surrounded by an impenetrable forest, has a predictable sameness. Her days are filled with tending to her family's beehives, chasing after her sisters and dreaming of bigger things, while her twin, Samuel, is free to roam as he wishes. Yeah, I've heard that this is kind of like a family horror type of thing. I don't know, but I have had this on my shelf since last year and I really should get to it. I guess in a way what I'm doing too is kind of a backlist TBR, sort of, because the next book is a Man Called Ove, which if you don't know, it is by Frederick Bachman. And this is not a horror. This is, I don't know. I've been told that like his books are literary, but they're also like heart lifting or whatever. I know my mom said that this one is a movie as well. Um, and the reason that I want to put it in the fall, like try and read it for the fall is because A, it's one of the books that I would like to finish this year. And B, I just feel like it'll have cozy vibes, I guess. So yeah, it says, at first sight, Ove is almost certainly the grumpiest man you will ever meet, a curmudgeon with staunch principles, strict routines, and a short fuse. People think him bitter, and he thinks himself surrounded by idiots. Ove's well-ordered, solitary world gets a shake-up one November morning with the appearance of new neighbors, a chatty young couple and their two boisterous daughters who announce their arrival by accidentally flattening Ove's mailbox with their U-Haul. What follows is, heartworm is a heartwarming tale of unkept cats, light unlikely friendships, and a community's unexpected reassessment of the one person they thought they had all figured out. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this one too, so we shall see. Okay, next are all horror books. No, I mean, I don't really know what this one's called. I think this one is a romance. So I do want to read The X Hex. I got this one for from Book of the Month last year. And I mean, 
I don't know, I've been kind of on a romance kick lately. I've been reading quite a few romance books, so we'll see how this one goes. And it do it really, I mean, it's witches, romance, it's fall, you know? So it says, first it says, never, mi never mix vodka and witchcraft. That's all I need to know. I think it's about, like, a girl who broke up and she hexes her ex or something and it turns into a whole fucking thing. It sounds like it could be funny and also have that kind of, like, witchy spookiness of the spooky season without really being a horror. And sometimes it's good to split up my reads, so that's why I'm trying to not stack up too much on the, like, absolute horror thriller stuff. Okay, so those three were like the more digestible reads. Now we're gonna get into the more horror reads. So I have December Park by, what's his name, Ronald Malfi. This is a chonky book and the font is so small. <laughs> yeah, this one I think is like an abduction type of story or like a missing, missing people probably murder on the loose type of thing. It says, in the fall of 1993, 15-year-old Angelo Mazzone sees his first dead body. The murder is linked to the Piper, the possible abductor of three other children who haven't been found over the past few months. Some people in town say the woods are haunted, but Angelo and his friends head in anyway to search the darkness for a monster what they find there will change who they are and everything they once believed. It also kind of sounds like a coming of age story as well. I don't know, it sounds creepy. I hope it'll work out for me. All right, then we have, this is a new book that I added to my TBR. It was from Book of the Month and it's The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. And it has with it, I left it up there, but it has like another booklet because sections of the book are written in Spanish. And so there are translations for that. I'm not too worried though because I have a little bit of Spanish in me, um, so I know a little bit. My mom speaks fluent Spanish, so I'm like, you know, you would hope that I would have learned something by now. Um, oh shit. All right, this says, buried in debt due to his young daughter's illness, his marriage at the brink, Mario reluctantly takes a job as a hitman, surprising himself with his proclivity for violence. After tragedy destroys the life he knew, Mario agrees to one final job, hijacking a drug cartel's cash shipment before it reaches Mexico. Along with an old friend and a cartel insider, Mario sets off on the near suicidal mission, which will leave him in with either a cool $200,000 or a bullet in the skull. Yeah, this sounds kind of like more of a gore thriller probably but i don't know could also surprise me uh there's like that little thing at the bottom says the devil takes you home is a panoramic odyssey for fans of s.a cosby i think that's why i chose it s.a cosby was the same guy who wrote razor blade tears and i love that one i should probably read more by s.a cosby all right and then we have this one i also got last year and i didn't get around to it so i really should the last house on needless street by catriona ward i have heard so many good things about this one in a boarded up house on a dead end street at the edge of the wild washington woods lives a family of three a teenage girl who isn't allowed outside not after last time oh geez a man who drinks alone in front of his TV, trying to ignore the gaps in his memory. And a house cat who loves napping and reading the Bible. <laughs> An unspeakable secret binds them together, but when a new neighbor moves in next door, what is buried among the birch trees may come back to haunt them all. Yeah, I am excited for this one too, because again, I've heard a lot of people really enjoyed it. I also have on my list of books to read before the end of the year is The Troop by Nick Cutter. So I recently read The Deep and I was pretty disappointed by it, but I've heard that The Troop is a bit different. Like it's just as gruesome, but it's not quite the same. And I've heard more people talk about The Troop than I've heard people talk about The Deep. And I've heard people say that The Troop is actually quite good if you're into body horror and shit like that, which I am. Let me just find like a quick synopsis of it because I don't own the book. I will have to borrow it. Once every year, Scoutmaster Tim Riggs leads a troop of boys into the Canadian wilderness for a weekend camping trip, a tradition as comforting and reliable as a good ghost story around a roaring bonfire. But when an unexpected intruder stumbles upon their campsite, shockingly thin, disturbingly pale, and voraciously hungry, Tim and the boys are exposed to something far more frightening than any tale of terror. The human carrier of a bioengineered nightmare, 
a horror that spreads faster than fear, a harrowing struggle for survival with no escape from the elements, the infected, or one another. Bah, bah, bah. I have heard that there is animal death here, like it's pretty gruesome. I have been warned and that stuff doesn't really bother me, like bugs and stuff like that. I have another book that I would like to get around to. This one is a middle grade actually, and it is called The Crooked Door by Brad McLeland. It's not out yet. This is an arc. I do not request arcs very often, but sometimes one of them catches my eye. And this one, the cover caught my eye. And then the description also caught my eye. So this is only getting published in like April of 2023. So I got plenty of time to get around to it, but I really want to read it during spooky season. This is the description that's given on NetGalley. It says, something demonic stirs in, its, in this suspenseful horror novel for young readers about a close-knit circle of children, the monster at their whim, and the lone girl who can save her parents from evil. This is for fans of Victoria Schwab, which I am, Catherine Arden, and Holly Black. I haven't read anything by those two. For Ginny and her parents, losing their home and being forced to move to Nebraska was hard enough, but when a sudden dust storm forces them to seek shelter in the strange town of Pottsville, the real trouble begins. By day, Pottsville is all friendly faces and welcoming storefronts, but at night, creatures lurk in the shadows, and a bossy band of local kids seems to be in charge. And through it all, you can hear the eerie call of a sinister dirge moaning in the distance, always hungering for a new friend to join its ancient twisted game. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds really good. So I'm very excited. I will be reading the arc and most likely reviewing it. I'm really hoping that it's going to be good. Really hoping. Okay, now if you thought that that was a long enough list of uh, things to read in the span of what three months september october november december four months four months i have more and these ones are chunkier so i read the poppy war a while back with lorena uh over on instagram at lorebook dreamer and i i liked the poppy war i like the idea behind it i thought that it was a very interesting kind of story and there were just a few writing flaws maybe yeah there were just a few writing flaws that i think could have been better but anyways point is lorena continued reading the series and she finished it and she said i mean it's worth reading nothing like absolutely amazingly wildly great but worth reading so I am going to try and read the next two books in the Poppy War trilogy, which I think is uh, The Dragon Republic and then The Burning God. So there's that added on my list of things to read by the end of the year. Then thank you to Sam for showing me on Instagram. What is it? The Okay, so it's a YouTuber called Covers with Cassidy, and she does a book club called The Backlist Book Club, where they try to get to like trilogies, series, whatever that they still haven't gotten around to. And starting in October, all the way up until like February, the book club is going to be doing the Lycanius trilogy. And if you have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I started uh, The Shadow of What Was Lost last year. I don't even know when I did, but I, I read it as an audiobook and I actually want to reread it physically because I remember most of what happened, but I don't know, I feel like I need a refresher and sometimes reading stuff physically is easier. So I'm going to be adding the first two books uh, to read by the end of the year. Hopefully I make it. They're very, very big books. Um, but thankfully I see them all the time when I walk into my library so I can just grab them. And the last books that I would like to finish for fall and the end of the year are the last two books I need to read to finish reading, rereading the Underland Chronicles, which are Marks of Secret and The Code of Claw. Gosh, I'm so excited. I don't even remember how this series ends, so I'm actually really anxious. So this is the fourth book in the series, and this is the fifth book in the series. And man, I'm just so excited. Aren't the bats so cute? I love it. I was obsessed with this series as a kid, and I am still obsessed with it as an adult. So yeah, I won't say much about these actually because, you know, it's the, it's the fourth and fifth book in a series. I don't want to spoil anything. Oh, I was dog earing when I was a kid. What? I have dog ears in here. Oh, I'm so proud of my younger self doing dog ears. <laughs> actually keeping track of where I liked certain things. That's actually really cool. Anyways, that is my extended list of 
reads that I would like to read in the fall. Let me know what you are trying to get into spooky season and the end of the year, unless fall is different for you. So then just let me know, I don't know, what you plan on reading in the next four months. And yeah, that's really it. Oh, well, all right, I'm holding books in one hand. So I will see you next time. Bye.